Previously, Britain's Labour Party is having its annual conference. People are coming up like solidarity. <laughs> In a surprise move, the Israeli embassy's senior political officer introduces our undercover reporter as the chairman of a new spin-off group, the Young Labour Friends of Israel. A visitor to the LFI stall is caught up in a row over anti-Semitism. Thank you, Jane. I've enjoyed the conversation. I'm leaving. No, I'm, not, no, I'm asking you about a settlement safety. In this final episode of The Lobby, Shai Masot's activities paint a troubling picture. Few foreign embassies in London are this engaged in Britain's democratic process. And at what point does it cross a line? Following decades of violence, a new challenge has emerged to Israel's occupation of Palestinian lands, called BDS. BDS is here to stay. That's the global movement to boycott, divest, and impose sanctions on Israel and expose it as an apartheid state. The Israeli government has responded with a campaign to rebrand the country's image. The reason we should fight BDS is because it's wrong. It's a moral outrage. It's an operation run by the secretive Ministry of Strategic Affairs. They recruit mainly former intelligence officers. Its main task is to counter BDS worldwide. Using an undercover reporter, Al Jazeera's investigative unit exposes Israel's clandestine activities in London, a city that's become a major battleground. BDS campaign in many ways germinated in Britain. You'll meet the people working to challenge BDS at every level of British politics. Ah, OK, nice to meet you. We work really closely together. But like a lot of it's behind the scenes. One of Israel's main targets is the Labour Party. For the first time, its leader is a champion of Palestinian civil rights. They'd be very happy to see Jeremy Corbyn no longer leader of the Labour Party, for sure. It's a covert action that penetrates the heart of Britain's democracy. Can I give you some happy that we suggest you take down? It is outrageous interference in British politics. It shouldn't be permitted. It's a battle of ideas seeking to change not only how Israel is portrayed, but even how it is debated. It's anti-Semitic. No, it's not. It's it is. The annual conference of Britain's opposition Labour Party is continuing in Liverpool in the north of England. The gathering is important for Israel because for the first time, the party leader is a supporter of the BDS movement. I do. Robin, our undercover reporter, has been with members of the Labour Friends of Israel. Shai Masot had conceived a plan to attract young pro-Israel Britons to the Labour Party, what he called the young LFI. He promoted Robin as their chairman. Now it seems the young LFI is about to become operational. I don't know what you're doing. Shai's basically in he very empty out of their money. She's good. It's happened to help funding up the events. Like, the community of Saturday, we kind of managed to open money. It's just, um, it's just getting organized off the ground now, really. By now, our undercover reporter had become a trusted confidant of the Israeli embassy's senior political officer. But suddenly, he wants a private word. Yeah, I wanted to speak with you. We're also doing actually over a coffee, but yeah, just let's do it on the way to the event. So it appears that something has changed. When I, I was drunk or whatever, I introduced you like as uh, working with young LFI. Actually, it's not an official position yet. Shai had earlier introduced our undercover reporter as the new chairman of the young LFI. It was an idea. It's an idea that I cannot implement because yeah. I am not a young uh, Labour friend of Israel or young British guy. Yeah. It's not relevant to me at all. I am an official. I can give you an idea and I can help you with everything, but I'm not relevant to you at all. Just, you know, I'm a tool for you to help you if you want to do it. Yeah. Yeah, sure. If you decided to get the idea. So you you don't coordinate too much with them or? I'm coordinating a lot of things with them, but I'm not their boss. My position is that if you need help um, with, you know, to connect it to the groups, to bring it to the places, I can do that. But you cannot be affiliated with me and you cannot, like, 
uh, uh, use me or, or as someone that said something. Sure. Yeah. It's not relevant. I'm not relevant to anything. I'm just working in the embassy. On the following day, Hyatt's newspaper reported on a leaked cable from the Israeli embassy in London. The memo accused an Israeli government ministry, Strategic Affairs, of operating British Jewish organizations in a way that could put them in violation of British law. The Minister of Strategic Affairs may use local groups which are entitled uh, as British civilians to counter BDS. They may be in touch with them, they may instruct them, they may support them, but, but they would be very, very careful not to violate as a state the laws and the sovereignty of, of other nations. You cannot say, yeah, Shai said it. it's fine that I will volunteer to you, because I'm not, I, I'm not the one who, you know, taking the decisions to okay. telephone. I'm sorry if I brought you into trouble. No, I, I am, I'm totally fine. OK, good. It's just important that, you know, that's, that's, that's really yeah. clear. I'm not, so what? if I'm giving you, like, an idea, it's like friendly ideas. It's in a friend way. It's, it's off the record. It's not something that you can use. So, but then, but there's, I mean... I mean, if you are feel like you like the idea, so you got an idea from a friend to, to do a DLFI, it's fine that that would be that friend, but in the bottom line, it's not uh, like... Uh, it's not like... Uh, it's not like uh, that I have a say in that idea. Yeah, OK, sure. Do you get it? <laughs> That's politics. If you were trying to fool the British people by setting up a front organization which masquerades or says that it's is genuine uh, friends of Israel but actually is run from Tel Aviv, that's troubling. Just imagine if there's a great big sort of apparently spontaneous pro-Iranian organization in Britain and it turned out that it was run from Tehran or inspired by Tehran. That would be outrageous. The annual event run by the Labour Friends of Israel was one of the most anticipated at the conference. The party leader always attends. The LFI chairperson kicked off proceedings. We must campaign flat out against the BDS movement and all those who seek to demonize the state of Israel. To single out uniquely the world's only Jewish state and call for it to be boycotted. That is anti-Semitic and we should say so loudly. It's very surprising that people suddenly were talking about fundamental issues of anti-Semitism in the Labour Party once a certain person was elected as the leader. Ladies and gentlemen, the leader of the Labour Party, Jeremy Corbyn. That's the only reason people were looking for anti-Semitism. And you know, if you look for something, you will always find it, whether it exists or it doesn't exist. And I want to thank Joan Ryan as chair of LFI for the work that she's done and the way that she represents the organization. The sudden onset of anti-Semitic claims led Jeremy Corbyn to publicly engage with Labour's pro-Israeli groups. The Labour Party is not a home for anti-Semitism in any form. I do not intend to allow it to be. We've reduced the report to deal with that. In the past, Israel has grown used to unchallenged support from across the British political establishment. That cross-party consensus allowed Israel a free hand, enabling it to build illegal settlements on Palestinian lands. I'm sure many people are pleased to hear your commitment to the two-state solution and your commitment to fight anti-Semitism wherever it appears, in our party or in the wider society. In private, Israel has another message. Corbyn and the global BDS movement that he supports threatens the political status quo that has tolerated Israel's occupation of Palestinian lands for half a century. Corbyn is crazy. One of the things that he doesn't understand or doesn't get is that at the moment that you get the leadership, you need to drop all the weirdos, extremists. It's good that they were your campaigners. You cannot build a government from extremists. And he doesn't want to do that. He wants to stay with all of those weirdos.
back at her London home, the woman who confronted Joan Ryan over the construction of Jewish-only settlements had received a message. She had become the subject of a formal Labour Party investigation. The following allegation has been brought against you regarding your conduct at the Labour Party conference 2016. Thank it's you, Jane. I've enjoyed the conversation. No, I'm no, no, I'm asking you about no, the uh, settlements so, they've told me. When the lady who I now subsequently learned was Miss Ryan accused me, the allegations was that I was being anti Semitic. I was just appalled. Totally atomize the whole of the West Bank. I'm asking you, I'm really genuinely interested, how a two-state solution... A two -state solution. The complaint alleged that Jean constantly suggested that the LFI had lots of money and power, when in fact she had said once the LFI has money and prestige. Nor did Jean mention a high-paying job. As a concluding paragraph, his summary says, the above incidents and allegations leveled at me left the complainants feeling victimized, intimidated, and both felt the incident contained what they both described as incidents of anti-Semitism. I reported that incident. Have you? That woman. I'm not formal complaint. You've got really After several weeks, the investigation cleared her name. That they should be the ones to feel victimized and intimidated from a member of the public, a member of the Labour Party, approaching a stall where they're purporting to give information and presumably wanting to discuss the two-state solution. I, I just find that almost, I mean, laughable. If it weren't so affecting of me, I know now that it can absolutely impact on people's lives. I am just a regular citizen who is concerned about what is happening in the Middle East and not to be able to talk about that without being accused of being anti-Semitic, I find deeply worrying. I think that is quite shameful. Back at the Israeli embassy in London, Shai Masot remained keen to find a role for Robin. He invited our undercover reporter to meet an experienced parliamentary operator. Maria Strazzolo. You must have arrived one second after me. Both were on time for their meeting. As they waited for Shai to emerge from the embassy, it turns out that Strazzolo has met two of Shai's superiors in Israel. The one time I was late, um, actually, she's uh, Shai's boss. I met her in uh, Jerusalem when I was there in the summer. <laughs> the one time I was late, she was on time <laughs> last year. I met her with her boss a couple of times with my then boss because they wanted to discuss things like, you know, problems yeah. <laughs> with the UK government. I used to work for an MP, a minister, really. Uh, yeah. Who's that? Yeah. Robert Halfen. Halfen? Yes. the British civil servant began to educate our undercover reporter on how the Israel lobby works inside Parliament, and especially the Conservative Party. How many of the MPs from your party are in CFI? Oh, there's a bunch of them. When there is the, the annual lunch, which is just before the Christmas, basically the whips from the hallways make sure the light bulbs come after the CFI lunch because it's like all the parties there. Whips are party loyalists who ensure MPs turn up whenever they are needed to vote. And the uh, and the PM. And the PM and the Chancellor and the Foreign Secretary and everyone. <laughs> When we're talking about the construction of British policy towards the Middle East, towards the Palestinians, towards the Israelis, you can't describe that without taking into account the fact that the Israeli government has a very powerful ally in the shape of the conservative Friends of Israel, and that they do play a, they do brilliantly, brilliant job at getting the Israeli uh, point of view of, across. The parliamentary officer described the ease with which the CFI's information was accepted by MPs. 
if at least you can get a small group of employees that you can always rely on when there is something coming to target. And you know, you, you brief them, you say, you don't have to do anything, we're going to give you this feedback, we're going to give you the information, we're going to do everything for you. Then I think it becomes easier. And from that day, the group of mine grow and grow and grow. So if you if you prepare everything for them, it's harder for them to say, oh no, I don't have time. You know, so if, if they already have the question to take for here, it's hard to say, oh no, no, no I won't do it. Strazzolo boasted about how her efforts once made an immediate impact on the national debate. I was in Israel with the affair when, uh, when they had uh, found the three kids that had been kidnapped in 2014. And I was on the phone with Rob to explain to the table a question for Prime for the rest of the time for paying um, tribute <laughs> and also tabling an urgent question. To get, yeah, to get a statement from the government on the three kids. Mr. Robert Halfon. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Um, the world has seen the tragic and brutal murders of three Israeli youngsters, most probably by Hamas. Will my honourable friend give the Israeli government every support, possible support at this time? And does he not agree with me that far from showing restraint, Israel must do everything possible to take out Hamas terrorist net networks? And will he give the Israeli government support in this? I think it's very important that Britain will stand with Israel as it seeks to bring to justice those who are responsible. By now, the senior political officer at the Israeli embassy had become a trusted confidant of our undercover reporter. It's quite funky. Yeah, I like this. Oh, this is... yeah, I'd rather go for this one. Yeah. Shai invited Robin to attend a meeting organized in part by the City Friends of Israel, a group he earlier said that he was establishing. It looks like you got along with Israelis. You have to speak to Israelis. Where can we get along? Yeah, that's amazing how you do that. Hello, sir. Thank you very much. Maria Strazzola was also there. Discussion turned to Donald Trump. So he's an unpredictable person. The only thing that you, you, you know you can, I mean, from Israel's perspective, of you, you can think that he's like steady in his area. Is the fact that his daughter is a Jew, she converted to Judaism. The meeting had been coordinated with APAC the American-Israeli Public Affairs Committee, perhaps Washington's most powerful lobby group. It is not widely known that AIPAC has a presence in London. As a European and somebody who lives in the Western world and enjoys its individual freedoms, I also view, and I hope most of you do as well, I view Israel as the battleground where uh, modernity and Western values meet the forces that want to destroy uh, that way of life. Focus campaign. Joe Richards from Apex Wall Street Division summed up their operations. Today, uh, we're a pretty robust organization where we have one single mission, which is to make sure that the United States and Israel remain very close together in the relationship in many different ways. And the way we do that is by relationship building with our 535 members of Congress, 100 in the Senate, 435 in the House. APAC's guests explained to Robin their interest in Britain. The real strategic goal is to get the UK to behave more like the US than Europe when it comes to Israel. So, and to kind of pull them, tug them into the US sphere. By this point, Robin was well aware of the Israeli diplomats' close ties with America's pro-Israel lobby. I went to APAC last year because I, I organized the American British delegation to APAC. So it was me and the British donor. There was like around 30, 40 people, which kind of was just sponsoring the CFI, CFI conservative as well, some of them the labor as well. And we all went together to APAC. But in the bottom line, we have a, a donor meeting with this head of strategy in APAC, and he met us basically to teach us, you know, give us some ideas to Britain. Shai then announced another audacious plan involving a front company set up by the Ministry of Strategic Affairs, whose mandate is to fight BDS. 
So the strategic press, they asked me, they are establishing a new company, a new private company that basically will work for uh, the Israeli government. It's like kind of outside company, whatever. The Ministry of Strategic Affairs has called it a secret war, potentially involving what this prominent Israeli reporter described as dirty tricks. When I say dirty tricks, they can smear people, uh, activists, BDS activists, or others. They can um, hack their emails in order to collect information about what they are up to. They can, you know, trash people. It's going to be an office of 20 people, so the position that they suggested to me to do is to be the liaison for the international communities around the world. So it's good sometimes, because you know it's good to work with APAC, and the others, 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 it's good. It's good. And the last position that I applied for, that there is a slightly chance I will get, actually, is to be the... The head of the Foreign Affairs Department of the Intelligence uh, Department in Israel. I, I'm not a, a career. I am political posting team, so I came just for one position to uh, assist in political issues. That's specific. Sometimes you need someone to take care just of that, to be focused on that. So that's what I do. At ease and with the trust of his dinner companions, Shai floated the idea of a parliamentary plot. Can I give you some happy that I suggest you take down? <laughs> well, you know, if you look hard enough, I'm sure that there is something that we're trying to hide. Yeah, I have some happy. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Okay. No, she knows we can't be the one. Question. Yeah, it's good to remind me. <laughs> okay. Deputy Minister. This exchange between the political officer of um, the Israeli embassy and a parliamentary staffer about taking down, is the phrase used, Alan Duncan is outrageous, it's shocking. This is uh, clearly a deliberate attempt by a foreign government to interfere in the workings of British democracy and to secure the destruction of the career of a minister in the British government. We recognized Israel in 1950 when they didn't have any clear borders, they didn't have a capital city, and now it's high time to do the same for Palestine. Yeah, you're doing a lot of problems. I thought we had uh, like a good you know, a little bit. No? Uh, no, no, no. Ah. So why is this good? Boris? He basically good. Yeah, he, he just don't care. He's busy with other things. Boris is busy, you know? He's, you know, he is an idiot, but he, so far, but so far, he became the Minister of Foreign Affairs without any kind of responsibility. So technically, if something will happen, it won't be his fault. The parliamentary officer then recalled how Sir Alan Duncan had once confronted her boss, the MP Robert Halfin. Rob was uh, writing articles to your interviews, doing everything, asking questions in about, yeah. about uh, the terrorist salaries. Ah, when it was a terrorist salaries. Yeah. And, uh, and after a while, when Rob was doing a lot of it, I got on TV set and took him. Like, I think, I don't remember exactly what he did, but he took him on the side and started him. Uh, if you don't yeah. stop this, I'm going to ruin you, I'm going to destroy you, and all of that. And Rob told the whips, and the whips uh, just told him to come down. Okay. Uh, you know, never say never. Yeah, never say never. Yeah, yeah but uh, scandal, what about the. Uh, <laughs> like, I can't tell anyone from the kids. <laughs> 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 who is it? <laughs> I certainly think that she needs to explain what she was doing 
We want to know whether any further steps were taken towards getting rid of, taking out Mr. Duncan. I think we need to know a lot more about the background to this. What else was going on to damage the Foreign Office Minister? It strikes me that this is the sort of job which the intelligence services should do, to have a good look at what's going on. Britain's domestic spy agency, MI5, includes in its definition of espionage, seeking to influence decision makers and opinion formers to benefit the interests of a foreign power.